Hey, what's going on YouTube? Back again with another video. And this video, I'm going to be going over Cyano. Now, this is a nightmare that uh, most of us have faced in uh, one point or another during our uh, reef aquariums. Um, and there is a solution. And there is major problems that cause this. And mostly they come from just poor uh, poor husbandry so let me get right into it so again this is cyanobacteria problems and solutions causes there's several causes um, that cause cyanobacteria in our in our reef aquariums or any uh, saltwater aquarium for that matter uh, and the first thing to do is to address the problem, figure out what the problem is. So, the first uh, problem that causes uh, cyanobacteria is nutrient buildup. Now, what I mean by this is, first of all, overfeeding. Um, this could be really easy to do, and I know I've done it before too. Um, just make sure that you feed enough for each fish to get what it needs and that's it nothing more don't uh, feed a little bit uh, extra just to just because you think they they're still hungry um, a good rule of thumb is to feed them each fish about uh, enough food that is uh, their the size of their eye socket um, and don't be uh, don't think that they're hungry because they come up to the glass every time that you come up to the front of the aquarium they're, these fish are smart and that once they know who feeds them they know that you're the one that feeds them they will uh, come to the to the top of the tank or, or to the front of the glass uh, because they think it's feeding time just because you're there but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're hungry so I would feed I feed my fish once a day and I think that's enough and some people even go as far as feeding every other day to cut down on that and a good rule of thumb if you're feeding pellets just feed uh, a couple just one or two pellets at a time and and, and let the fish eat them up and by the time the first pellet hits the floor which uh, means that they're not hungry that's when you need to stop feeding so uh, once the fish lose interest in the food and let, let it hit the sand then you know to stop feeding right there now another cause that causes up uh, nutrient buildup is dead spots um, what's real important is to have adequate water flow now that's not just for the corals but for the tank and, and all um, you want to make sure that you have good circulation in your water going from the front to the to the back as well from side to side now a lot of people are focused on getting the water flow to their corals and this uh, at times leads them to have dead spots in the back of the tank or in the sides of the of the back um, this is very important just to uh, keep any nutrition uh, any nutrients from building up in any of these dead spots and that's uh, just gives the cyanobacteria tons of food to grow on now <clears throat> another uh, subject in the nutrient buildup is maintenance um, some people might just half-ass their water changes or uh, stuff like that what I mean by maintenance is just making sure that when you're doing your water change that you get all the uh, get to all the nooks and crannies that you can get to all the dead spots and just clean up uh, suck up any water that's uh, close to the sand bed what I like to do is I go along all my sand bed and just wave the water hose around to create some uh, 
motion and to lift up any nutrients that are on the sand bed and I pick up any leftover food with that and also uh, any molts and so if you have shrimp or crabs as soon as they molt you should get the molts out and uh, don't let them sit in there because they will break down and that's just giving more food to uh, the cyanobacteria now uh, the last uh, the last uh, topic in the nutrient buildup is uh, phosphates now uh, phosphates are introduced in your tank through uh, through not uh, rinsing out your uh, your frozen foods now I'm not sure if that's the only way that phosphates are introduced into your tank but in my case uh, the way that phosphates have entered my tank in the past is just from me thawing out uh, frozen food in a cup of, of uh, tank water and then just feeding straight from there now what you should be doing if you're feeding, feeding frozen food is thawing it out maybe in a net or something rinsing it out and throw any of that water out and then put the food in a cup and mix it with some water from with some fresh tank water and then feed that to your fish because all that cloudy water that you get from the frozen foods is what is just extra nutrients that you're, that you're uh, introducing into your tank. Now, a second cause of cyanobacteria besides the nutrients is uh, lighting. It's very important if you have T5 light bulbs to replace your bulbs as needed. Um, that's one of the disadvantages of having T5 lights is that you have to uh, replace the bulbs, bulbs quite often. Um, anywhere from nine months to a year depending on the quality of your bulbs and I would recommend that you uh, get high quality bulbs because uh, they just last longer and uh, they're built right. Um, now you might be thinking what does old bulbs have to, th have to do with it. Um, when your bulb starts to go out the uh, light spectrum starts to change and uh, when the light spectrum changes it uh, can go through some light spectrums that algae and cyanobacteria prefer which gives them a uh, an added boost so remember change out your light bulbs so now let's get into the cures there's several ways you could go of course if you have uh, old bulbs replace your bulbs and I would recommend with high quality bulbs like uh, ATI bulbs or um, there's another one called Gizium, I think. I'm not too sure. Don't quote me on that. But um, other than the bulbs, there is a natural way to cure cyanobacteria and a medication way to cure your cyano. Now, each one has its pros and cons. Um, obviously, the natural way is better for your tank you're not adding any uh, medication in your tank that could be potentially harmful to any of your inhabitants and uh, a con might be that it might not be as effective now the medication route it's super effective that's a pro but a con is that you know don't <clears throat> necessarily know how it will affect your tank how it will affect your fish your corals or your uh, invertebrates or even your little uh, creepy crawly critters that you have inside your tank um, anytime you introduce any kind of uh, medication or any kind of substance in your tank you, you could be stressing out your corals you could be stressing out your fish and as we all know the point is the goal is to keep the fish and keep the corals as happy as possible and that happiness and comfortableness uh, is what leads to a healthy uh, creature and uh, good growth so let's talk about the natural way to cure now in the past these are several things that I've found uh, to cure cyanobacteria natural 
first of all, um, you need to find your problem and fix it. So when I say figure out your problem, I mean uh, figure out what do you what, what what's causing your nutrient buildup or your cyano to come. So whether that's light bulbs or that's your nutrient buildup, figure out what it is. If it's light bulbs, replace your light bulbs. If it's nutrient buildup, uh, figure out what's going on. If you're overfeeding, cut back on feeding. If you're not cleaning right, then uh, clean. Uh, do your water changes more uh, effective and uh, that's the first step is f is finding a problem and fixing it I don't know why I wrote it last in the card but that's the very first step now to get an upper hand on the cyanobacteria um, I've read on several forums that corals do not mind too much a blackout they could go through a blackout for two or three days um, there's always a risk involved and uh, you do this at your own risk but I've done a blackout <clears throat> but in my blackout what I did was I moved all my corals to a quarantine tank and and put a light on them and left everything else in the tank with the cardboard wrapped around all all four walls of the glass and over the top and I blacked it out for three days. Now the purpose of the blackout is to uh, deprive the cyanobacteria of the light because it does use light to uh, to grow. It is a it's a cross, I guess, between a photosynthetic uh, algae and an organism that eats because it can survive off of light or it can survive off of nutrients so the purpose of the blackout is to uh, to kind of give you the upper hand on it and kill back the cyanobacteria by depriving it of the light and like I said again give you the upper hand when uh, dealing with your maintenance now the blackout isn't a cure. If you don't find your problem and fix it, it'll come back within a couple of days. Now, if you do a blackout and you find your problem, your pro let's say your problem is dirty water, you're not keeping up with your maintenance, then the blackout gives you uh, an, a head start on the cyano and gives you a chance to start doing your water changes properly and keep the cyano from coming back. Now, these this isn't the only uh, ways to get rid of cyanobacteria naturally, but these are just some of the the ways that I've used in the past. Now, dosing with medication. Dosing should always be your absolute last option. Like I said again, you don't ever want to add stuff to your tank that could stress or kill anything in your tank. But sometimes uh, the problem is too bad, and it can't be uh, it can't be solved using the natural methods, as in my case. So first off, dose with caution. Follow all the instructions and everything that the medication tells you to do. And um, again, you have to fix your underlying problem because the medication will kill all the cyanobacteria. But if the nutrients are still in the water for it to thrive, it will come back. So what you have to do is get rid of those nutrients. So basically, again, just like blacking out, dosing just gives you an upper hand on the cyanobacteria. Um, so when you dose, it will kill all the cyanobacteria. And all you're left with is what your problem was in the first place is nutrients. So you have to do frequent water changes to get your nutrients out, or figure out uh, and figure out what your problem was if you're overfeeding, if you have dead spots, and uh, fix the problem. And if you do that, then the cyanobacteria will not come back. Now uh, back to the natural way. Um, the natural, if you go the natural route. 
it is a little bit slower results are not as uh, obvious and uh, it could it's an uphill battle but it's always best to go that route um, as for the dosing way I mean when I dosed my tank with the medication it was gone within two days and with constant water changes and keeping up my maintenance I have not seen a sign of it again so again this has been a video going over cyano problems and solutions and uh, I want to show you guys what I've used for my problem uh, for my cyano this is it right here don't know if you guys can see that this is um, Kemi Clean Aquarium Treatment and the instructions say uh, to use two of these small little scoops uh, what, well I used two it says one small scoop for every 10 gallons so that shows you how concentrated this uh, solution is and you have to be very careful whenever uh, medicating your tank as to not overdose anything um, again this is a miracle worker right here if you have no other option I'll definitely recommend Kimmy clean I have not noticed any uh, any losses in my tank after I use this all my fish were still healthy still eating all my corals were doing just fine my shrimp, my crab, all my creepy crawly things still come out at night time and uh, everything has just been great. But, like I said, this isn't a cure-all uh, thing. This just gives you a head start and if you fix the underlining problem, then you'll have the upper hand on cyanobacteria. So what I did was I started doing, after I did this, treatment I uh, did a water change every three days for two weeks and that was to get rid of all the nutrients uh, that were built up in my tank and then after those two weeks I started doing a uh, water change every single week and ever since then I have not seen a sign of cyanobacteria at all um, proof is in the pudding. I mean, you look at my tank, everything looks good. Um, and let me go ahead and show you guys the box. So, this is it. Kimmy Clean Water Treatment. And this small thing treats up to 300 gallons. And this is the smallest one they have. So, unfortunately, they don't have anything smaller. Um, the directions are right here. Again, uh, this has been a video to go over cyanobacteria. Any questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the section below. And be sure to subscribe to uh, keep up with any videos that I make. And I'll see you guys next time.